I open the door mad, but it's the police. I see them in this tiny little foyer with all their vests and badges. One of the officers has a battering ram. Mm, mm, mm. Welcome to Homemade. I'm Shannon Kaysen. We were coming down the steps when they were coming in. A new family had moved into the three flat building we lived in in Chicago. They were moving in the garden apartment, which is really small for a family. The garden apartment is more for a single person or a young couple at best. But I stopped, talked to the husband. My wife talked to the wife. Our two-year-old daughters introduced themselves on the porch. They had a two-year-old and we had a two-year-old. Me and the father smiled, looking at our little girls. Watching kids introduce themselves is fun because <laughs> they have to show what they have. Like, this is my doll, but this is my bear. The father said they were moving from the shelter down the street and were happy to have a place to call home. I told him, I know how it is, man. If you need anything, just give a knock upstairs. Anything. We left and they went inside. The very next day, I get a knock at the door. It was the father and he was asking for money for train fare to go downtown. I told him no problem. I'm headed downtown to go to work. We can just walk together and I'll swipe you through too. We walked down the sidewalk and down this long line of three flat buildings just like ours. And there's a big apartment building across the street. The neighborhood in uptown Chicago is really diverse. It's, it's Asians, it's Africans, Europeans, Americans, all of us. You can get Starbucks coffee from one building. You can get a fifth of Henny from another building. There's Mexican food, Thai food an Ethiopian restaurant, or you can get some flaming Hot Cheetos from the corner store on the way to the train. The side of the street that we're walking on, there's this big church with a shelter in the basement, and then there's the corner store. Guys hang out at the corner store. There's been some shootings at the corner. I ignore the guys on the corner. They sell drugs on the corner. There's gangs in Chicago, if you haven't heard. I'm from Detroit, so I'm not clueless, but I know like if you're not from a certain area, it's best just to keep your eyes open, and go unseen. They ignore me. I ain't got nothing to do with what they're doing. It's none of my business. So I am a little concerned when my new neighbor knows all the guys on the corner really well, but we talk on the train, laugh, he was a good guy. His name was Jesse. Another night, I get another knock on the door. This time, it's the mother from downstairs. It's after midnight. And my wife is at home, and the mother is asking to borrow $20 for some baby diapers. First, it's after midnight. The baby should be sleeping, and the store is closed. And the other thing, did she forget that we have a young child, too? So when I offer to give her a couple of diapers to make it through the night, she looks disappointed, which makes me suspicious. Another night, when my wife wasn't home again, I get another knock at the door, and it's the mother. She just hands me her daughter. Like she's in a panic and she's in this fluster and she says that she has to go across town. It's an emergency. And I'm holding her daughter in my arms and she doesn't even wait for an answer. She just leaves. I look from the window and I see her get in the car with a man who wasn't Jesse. I knew it was drugs. I, I'm going to be real with you. I, I knew it was crack. Uh, you ain't that wide awake that late at night without it being drugs or the pursuit of some drugs. Uh, the thing is, I have a heart towards people with addictions because I've had some myself. It's not drugs, but I'm no stranger to community rooms and church basements. In the morning, my wife cooked breakfast for us all. The girls played in the living room. My daughter Zoe 
brought every toy that she ever had into the living room to play, you know, kids or show offs. I said, Zoe, which, which toy are you going to let Ashley have? Zoe gave me a look like, like what? But Zoe is generous. She gave her this doll better than I expected. It was this little plush doll with a bonnet and pigtails. My wife called Ashley's mom and told her that we'll keep her an extra day. And that night, I put them under the door to explore covers and I tucked them in. One day, I'm coming home from the train from work and I pass by the corner. And the corners are empty. It's kind of nice. And it's like a regular neighborhood. I pass by the church with the shelter, the big apartment building across the street. And I get to my house and all the guys from the corner are sitting on my porch smoking with Jesse. I just stood there for a second. I can't ignore it now. The thing is, I came up in rougher neighborhoods than this uptown neighborhood in Chicago. I'm from Detroit, and, and this actually is a pretty nice neighborhood. You know, I worked hard, so my family doesn't have to be around the same drugs and violence that I might have saw growing up. I want better for my family. It's at a distance at the corner, but not on my porch. But I don't say anything. I just go inside. They were smoking in the garden apartment, and it was coming into our place. And my wife isn't really as passive as me. She walked downstairs, banged on the door, and told them, y'all got to stop smoking down here. My daughter upstairs coughing. So they went out to the porch. I went downstairs to talk to Jesse. And I'm like, how many people you got living down here now? And he said it was just them, but the guys from the corner are in and out and that they hard to get rid of. They like roaches. I told him, man, I'm going to tell you, y'all going to have some problems because my wife, she don't really play like that. And she hates roaches. <laughs> Cindy has seen one of the guys from the corner selling drugs in front of our place, and she yelled out the window, if I see it again, I'm calling the police. She told me when I got home, and I'm like, baby, you can't just go yelling out the window to people that you go call the police. If they get caught, who they go point to? You smarter than that. But she was just frustrated. Cindy saw some guys selling drugs again in front of our place, and she told me she was going to call the police. I stopped her. You don't call the police. I had this programming in my mind. I grew up in Detroit in the crack era, the 80s. You don't call the police. First, there's a distrust that the police are actually going to do something to help the situation. And another thing is the threat of retaliation from the person you might be telling on. Snitches get stitches. If it comes down to it, I'd rather just take care of whatever the situation is myself. But I think about that little girl and all those men coming in and out of that small apartment and the dazed look on her face when I see her and how when she stays with us, she doesn't want to go home. I got to confront this stupid way of thinking. I just can't ignore it. One night, I get another knock at the door. My wife wasn't home, and I'm a little frustrated now. I'm thinking that it's the mother or father from downstairs, so I open the door mad, but it's the police. I see them in this tiny little foyer with all their vests and badges. They tell me to go inside and lock the door. One of the officers has a battering ram. I go back inside. I can hear him bust down the door like boom. And then I hear scuffling and wrestling down below. The police are yelling and cussing. I go in to check on my daughter and she was still asleep. She didn't know anything was even happening. I can hear the guys from the corner screaming and yelling at the police. And, and then it just goes silent. I look from the window and I can see the police are carting everybody up from the basement to a van. All the guys from the corner and in the family, Jesse, his wife, and their daughter. One of the officers has Ashley in his arms and she's in her pink pajamas against his dark blues and blacks. And she has that little doll that Zoe gave her. 
I want to go out and tell the officer, hey, we can just keep her until everything is taken care of. But I don't want to go out and have the officers think that I'm part of everything else that's happening. We all look the same to the police. My wife's not home. I go out. I get arrested. And now my daughter's in some police officer's arms. I think the best thing for me is to stay where I am. It's none of my business. The next week, corners are empty. No smoke in our apartment. Nobody on our porch. About a week after that, same guys on the corner. I don't say anything to them. They don't say anything to me. They ignore me. I ignore them. We live in two different worlds. But honestly, I, I don't know if that's really true. I get to my place, and I hear the landlord downstairs, and I go downstairs to check on him to see if he go discount my rent for all the shit that we've been putting up with. And to my surprise, I see the family, Jesse, his wife, and Ashley. Our daughters play on the porch while me and Jesse talk. And Jesse says, you didn't have to call the police. And I tell him I didn't. And I didn't. I don't call the police. I just don't call them. I don't trust them. I looked at them and I said, but I should have did something because you need help. And he was nodding. He said they had to leave because they hadn't paid rent for like six months. Asked him what he was going to do. He didn't know. He asked if we can keep Ashley just till he get himself together. And I wanted to say, yeah, but we struggling to make it ourselves. We can't just take their little girl. It don't work like that. We looked at our daughters playing on the porch. And I looked him in the eyes. And I said, take care of that little girl. That's the most important thing. And if it comes down to it, and if you need anything, just give me a call. Anything. That was over 10 years ago. And I hope it turned out okay. Mm, mm, mm. Now that's homemade.